I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. One of the most common questions I get asked about the IELTS speaking test is, what topics will I get asked about? Well, I can certainly give you a good idea of the subjects that are most likely to come up in part one, but no one can predict part two and three topics. The range of possibilities is simply too big. Here's a list of over 40 common subjects that feature regularly in the test. Most of them have many different subcategories on which there could be an endless number of questions. On the other hand, you might get a more abstract topic such as kindness, respect, happiness, beauty, boredom or punctuality. There's just no way of telling. It would be impossible to prepare for them all, so what on earth do you do? Where do you start trying to prepare for the speaking test? We'll look at this problem first, then come back to the topic list. Firstly, it's important to know that the IELTS exam is an English test, not a knowledge test. Topics are related to general everyday things that anyone should be able to talk about. They're not specialist subjects. Whatever main topic you get, you'll be able to say something about it. In fact, the examiner doesn't care too much what you say about the topics, but they do care about how you say it. They're evaluating you on your grammar and your fluency and coherence. Together, these will make up 50% of your marks. The other 50% of the marks are for vocabulary and pronunciation. And this is where knowing some topic vocabulary and how to pronounce it becomes important. We'll be coming back to this a bit later. In part three, especially, you'll be asked questions that encourage you to use all the main tenses, the past, the present and the future. In my part three video, six common types of questions and how to create great answers, I explain how different types of question are designed to test different grammar points. For example, for questions that ask you to compare and contrast two things or situations, you'll need to use the past and present tenses. Other questions will ask you to speculate about the future, which will obviously require you to use the future tense. Hypothetical questions will be a prompt to use the conditional. So, making sure that you're confident with your basic grammar must be a priority in your preparation for the speaking test and, of course, for the rest of the exam as well. You must also work on the functional language of everyday conversation relevant to the type of questions you'll be asked. Phrases like, in my opinion, on the other hand, furthermore, I've included lots of examples on my web page on the six common types of part three questions. I've put a link to it in the notes below this video. You'll also find the video there, so please make good use of them. We're now ready to come back to that topic list. We'll start with a quick overview of the speaking test. In part one, the questions will be about you and your life. For part two, the examiner will give you a cue card with a topic written on it. You'll be asked to speak on this topic for up to two minutes. Then in part three, you'll be asked questions about your part two topic. They'll be about ideas and concepts rather than about you as in parts one and two. Part one questions will be easy to answer as you obviously know all about yourself. You can't give a wrong answer, so try to relax and treat this as a warm-up for the rest of the test. This is the one part of the speaking test where you will have some idea of the subject of your questions. They'll be related to one or more of the following topics. Your home, your family, your hometown, your work or study, or your dislikes or likes. The examiner will know if you work, you study or you're a stay-at-home parent and will ask you appropriate questions. So don't worry about getting, say, a question about work if you're a student. Now for parts two and three. 
Well, we've already said that you can't guess the topic in advance, so there's no point in worrying about what it'll be. What's more important is knowing how to answer parts two and three. Once you understand this, all that's left to do is practice, practice, practice. The speaking section of the website is full of lessons, tips and techniques on developing high level answers on any topic. So I'm not going to go into details here. Just follow the link in the notes below. There are also lots of related videos on the pages and on my YouTube channel. You'll also find hundreds of practice questions and lots of sample answers to learn from. It's while practicing that you're going to be focusing on specific topics. After all, each question will be on a particular subject, so this is the time to think about the topic and learn some key vocabulary. To make it easy for you, I created topic vocabulary pages on the website for many common subject areas such as health and fitness, the environment, technology, education and so on. And I'm adding more on a regular basis. Most pages have over a hundred common words and phrases related to the topic plus sample questions and answers. Each page contains IELTS style questions on the topic, sample answers, a list of common topic vocabulary with definitions and sample sentences. You'll find a menu of all the vocabulary pages via the link in the notes below. The vocabulary isn't there for you to try and memorise, but to use as a tool for answering specific questions. Identify the vocabulary you find most useful for answering practice questions, then record this in your vocabulary notebook and practice using it regularly. Also on the topic vocabulary pages are links to related online reading and listening resources. Using these resources in your preparation will increase your knowledge of the specific topics as you practice your reading and writing skills. And of course you'll be learning topic vocabulary at the same time. Remember that a specific topic could come up in writing, reading and the listening parts of the IELTS test as well. So with this method, you're gaining topic knowledge and vocabulary as part of your overall preparation and language learning, rather than making the topics the centre of your learning. Well, that brings us to the end of this video on speaking topics. Make good use of all the resources and lessons on the website and keep practising.